Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank, thank you, God. I, I appreciate it. What's good, everybody? It's your Hold on. I gotta stretch real quick. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. You know, it's, it's just been a rough day. Today, I'm gonna be giving y'all a different look. I'm gonna be giving y'all some of my UFC hot takes. And I'm not gonna lie. They're hot takes for a reason. So you're probably gonna disagree with some of them. But hopefully, you know, you still find them enjoyable. Number one's probably going to be the one that ruffles the most feathers. Alex Pereira would not be champ if he didn't have so much power. And before you get on my head, please hear me out. I'm going to just clarify before I continue. When I say wouldn't be champ, I don't mean he wouldn't be one of the best strikers we've ever seen. I'm not even saying he wouldn't be seen as, you know contender level opposition all i'm saying is if we were to just look at the fight style he has right now it's very striking based very kickboxing oriented pretty much you're not going to be seeing him shooting a whole bunch of takedowns and stuff most of his wins and you can go back and see for yourself most of alex's wins are by knockout and here's another hot take I believe Yuri has a good chance of beating him in this upcoming fight we got going on. I do see Alex coming in with a crazy, you know, one punch knockout. But look back at their first fight, Yuri wasn't getting like super outstruck. It wasn't like a one sided beatdown. If he had the power of someone like Colby Covington or something, I just don't see him being as much of a threat as he is today. There are some fighters out here that don't need power to win, they could just win simply off of uh maybe volume or just their skill set maybe they're grappling oriented so they might just choke you out or whatever someone like aljo for example you're not gonna go into an aljamain sterling fight expecting a ko but he wins for the most part for the most part i also feel like alex's power helps him in different i also feel like alex's power helps him in different departments Besides just striking, I'm gonna take this into boxing territory because that's where I'm most comfortable at. That's what I do in real life. Let's say you're striking with someone and you know they're just heavy fisted. And if any of those punches they're throwing lands clean, the fight's gonna be over early. If you know that, you're gonna be apprehensive to just either rush in or attack or throw your own punches or whatever the case may be. That's why there's people out here saying a strong offense can be a good defense or something. I don't know how the saying goes, but something like that. Everyone knows Alex's left hook is just death. So they're not gonna oh, get in close for a takedown or, you know, go with a whole bunch of volume because they know if he just slings that out whenever and it connects even once, the fight can change. I want you to be completely honest with yourself. How many times have you seen Alex be outstruck on the feet, maybe be held down to the mat for a good part of a round, smushed up against the cage, whatever it may be, and he's losing, and it looks like he's about to lose, and then all of a sudden, he just slings that left hook, and I'm not going to sit here and hate, sometimes he'll set that left hook up really nicely, and I'll be like, okay, that shows his IQ, that shows his skill level is above what people may think it could be, but then there are sometimes he just throws it out, and it's like, well, damn, that's all it takes. Power is the equalizer for a reason. Some people have it, some people don't. But when you really have it, like Alex does, you can get away. You can get away with stuff that you wouldn't be able to get away with if you didn't have that certain power. Is his takedown defense terrible? No. But as far as him, you know, being this like super over the top skilled adversary in every other, you know, department. When he was fighting Izzy, you know, he was chopping him down with the leg kicks. That's another thing he has. What I will point out, Alex does have really nice leg kicks, but in every other department, it looks like Izzy was just an all-around sharper striker. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure he rocked, Izzy even rocked him like towards the end of the, was it the first round? I'm pretty sure. The fight really only started majorly swinging in Alex's way is when he started landing and had Izzy against the cage. And me personally, I thought the first fight was a pretty quick stoppage by the same time it's like I didn't really care because it was Israel Adesanya and I mean we all saw what happened in the second fight but that was I guess I'm gonna just chalk it up to him being weight drained I don't know and when he started moving up to the light heavyweight division it was history here he is but all I'm trying to say is if he didn't have that fight ending power that he does he wouldn't be nearly as successful that he is today. And I also feel like Yuri's gonna give him a run for his money this upcoming Saturday, which is probably today, now that this video dropped. 
I'm pretty sure I'm gonna drop it on Saturday. Next hot take. Justin Gaethje is the most entertaining fighter in UFC history. Now, I know what you're gonna say. Oh, Justin's fight style is so simple. He's just pretty much a boxer that might hit you with a crazy leg kick here and there. He was a crazy collegiate wrestler, but you don't see too much wrestling coming from him. And sure, you might not see like flashy over the top, like, you know, freaking spinning tornado kicks coming from Justin Gaethje like you might see from a Wonder Boy, or you might not see him go stupid at the press conferences. But you know, when you tune into a Justin Gaethje fight, someone's getting knocked out. Either his opponent or Gaethje himself. Justin Gaethje is the only fighter I could personally say where I have never seen a boring fight. Everyone has a bad performance here and there. It is what it is, it's the fight game. Justin has never had a fight where I've been like, all right, I can take my eyes off it for a little bit. Because like, even the fights where he loses, Good like luck. sure, did he get messed up by Oliveira? Maybe, but it was a crazy fight. And I know recently he got knocked out by Max Holloway, but that just goes to show even when he loses, it's iconic. That UFC 300 KO was on the front page of YouTube for I don't even know how long. It was like I couldn't get away from it. You just, like he's called the highlight for a reason. Every single fight he finds himself into, I don't know how he does it, he just turns it into a firefight. Even against people that are known like point fighters. When they find themselves against Justin Gaethje, all of a sudden, the dog is in them, bro. Pause. Next hot take, Sean Strickland has a boring fight style. It's boring. And I get it. It's, I know it's taboo to talk about Sean being boring because he was the one to be Izzy. But be honest, that fight he had with Costa was a snooze fest. He just doesn't do enough. And I get it. He has this very defensive style. And, I, and don't get me wrong. I like how Sean Strickland fights. He somehow was able to bring the Philly shell into MMA. He has very fundamental boxing and he doesn't like to get hit a lot. Okay, that's cool. And that would be a cool, I'm not hating on that type of style of fight. Just you being in there is enough. Just you, you know, maybe you might point fight for a, you know, a split decision. That's okay, you're winning. But don't get on the press conference talking about some, oh, come on guys, we're gonna bleed for you. We're gonna lose brain cells for you. And then here comes fight night. We're watching the UFC bus take a trip to Push Kick City. And then we might take a detour to Jabbersville. I'm like, come on, bro. And then you're gonna turn up the last 10 seconds of the fight. Where was this energy at when, when like, come on, bro. Next hot take, Islam Makachev is already better than Khabib. Now, Khabib had a crazy reign in the lightweight division. 13-0, I'm is he the first undefeated? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's the first undefeated lightweight to at least retire undefeated. And his resume, no one can, like look, no one can say anything. Being Barboza, Aliquinta, McGregor, Poirier, and Gaethje back to back like that, no one can compete. And I, and I will say, I would like to see Islam defend the lightweight title a couple more times before he tries to go up in weight and face Edwards because I don't see Leon beating Islam honestly. If you stack Islam and Habib against each other, just look at how, one thing I will say before I even get to Islam, Habib's grappling is probably the best I've ever seen. Not in terms of skill level or like flashiness. I'm just talking about just purely on how effective his grappling is. I know a lot of people like to use the word, oh, dominant. He was the most dominant grappler. Yeah, he was, but he would just do very simple things and it would just prove to be so effective. Like he would use his legs to trap his opponent's legs so they couldn't get up. He would always just, you know, use his weight. It would just, it just, you know. I'm sorry, I'm saying a whole bunch of nothing right now, but I'm just getting real passionate about this. And even if you do get out of it or defend a takedown or, you know, escape a submission, he has that cardio, you know, he's in the freaking hills. So he's not getting, he's there in your face for five rounds. But on the other hand, Makachev might not, I'm gonna be honest, if Habib is a 10 in the grappling, Islam's probably like a seven. But that seven, if he's a seven, everyone else is like a one. So Islam might not be as good as Habib in the grappling territory, but as far as everything else, I feel like Islam has Habib beat. 
He's much more well-rounded in the striking exchanges. I know people like to call Islam a boring fighter. That's Get that out of here. Like, that's terrible. Terrible take. Islam Makachev puts on some very entertaining fights. Even when he does grapple, I know lots of people like to be like, Oh, like, grappling's boring. Don't watch MMA then if you don't want to see people freaking grapple. Imagine watching mixed martial arts and getting upset when you watch the martial arts mix. Like, what do you think's gonna happen? But this... This Dustin Poirier fight he just had showed me something. Go back and watch the fight. There were some exchanges where Islam was outboxing Dustin Poirier. Do you know how high level you gotta be to not only stick in the pocket with Dustin, but win some of those exchanges and then combine your striking into a grappling exchange that proves to be effective for you. And of course, I know some people are gonna be like, oh, well, it's a threat to takedown. Oh, it's a threat to takedown. Okay, the threat of the takedown might help in his striking, but if it was tick if if it was just purely kickboxing and Islam didn't have the grappling to help him, I feel as if he could contend with some of the higher level uh, striking specialists out here we have in the UFC today. And that fact alone, him being more well-rounded, makes him a better fighter, in my opinion, than Habib. And plus, he's still pretty, he's not like, you know, a young buck anymore, but he's not old. He still has years left to continue on his legacy. If he gets a couple more tile defenses in the lightweight division, he's already ahead of Khabib in the lightweight uh, goat race. And then if he goes above in weight, to fight Leon, what else are you going to say now? Next hot take. If John Jones didn't exist, Daniel Cormier would be the light heavyweight GOAT. Don't even get me started about John Jones, because even though I'm not gonna lie, he's ducking Aspinall. Besides that, he's, in my opinion, the greatest of all time. Now, if we're going to talk about what he's doing outside of the ring, he's tripping, I'm not gonna lie, but in the ring, in his prime when he was going against Shogun, Machida. And you know what? I am going to say Gustafson because I know he was getting pieced up in the first Gustafson fight, but when he came back for that second fight, it wasn't even it wasn't even a competition. John Jones is the most well-rounded fighter in UFC history, and I'm going to die on that hill. But people got to realize, I know people like to clown on Daniel for losing to John, and I know that was a crazy rivalry. But if you rewatch their first and second fight, it of course John Jones was out striking him, but it wasn't to a degree where it was like Daniel was getting like dog walked or Daniel was getting dominated. He was landing them right over hands like clockwork. And in the in the grappling exchanges, of course John was also getting the best of him, but it was purely because of the size difference. It's no secret that Daniel is on the shorter side when it comes to being a light heavyweight. Daniel Cormier, if John Jones didn't exist, he would, I mean, he was the champion anyway after Jones left. And before that, he was going stupid. And before, before that, like on Strike Force, he was going dumb. So the only person I could see that gives him, like, you know, maybe might push him off course a little bit is Stipe because he did have a little bit of trouble with Stipe in a, in a couple fights. Then again, he also beat Stipe, so it, that doesn't really matter. They were both old as hell, so I mean, who cares? I'm talking about Prime DC. Prime DC. These light heavyweights you see today? Oh, hell nah. D bro, Prime DC is washing them. All right, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. It's the next day. <laughs> I had to go do stuff, but yeah, it's the next, it's the following day now. Next hot take, Jack Della Maddalena is the best boxer in the UFC right now. There's a lot of candidates out there for the best boxer in the UFC. We got people like Max Holloway, Dustin Poirier. Me personally, I think you might as well go ahead and add to Poirier up in there on the list. The only reason I'm saying Jack Della Maddalena, I'm gonna just start calling him JDM. I don't feel like saying his whole name out. The reason I feel like JDM is the best boxer in the UFC. Just take a look at his at his fight style. He's not throwing a whole bunch of wide, wild punches. Most of his punches are gonna be straight down the middle. His defense is very solid. It's very, just very fundamental. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna see him out there throwing crazy overhand rights, windmill punches. You're gonna see very fundamental boxing. His footwork, to me, looks like the footwork you'd see coming from a boxer in a boxing ring. He's just using it in the UFC. In my honest opinion, he just looks like a boxer that just so happens to know how to throw a few kicks and knows how to grapple. 
JM is starting to become one of my favorite fighters. For some reason, the jab is just non-existent in you in, in mixed martial arts. And when it is being used, it's being like exploited by like, you know, somebody like Sean Strickland that will only use the jab. But JDM is a very nice, very sharp striker with his hand. He's not overly powerful, but he does have some heat in his gloves. He's pretty quick and he's very accurate. I feel as if compared to, and I know, that I'm, not, I'm not saying he's like over the top the best. I'm not saying like, oh, Holloway's right here and he's all the way up here. I'm just saying in my honest opinion from what I'm seeing, I'm talking fundamentally as a boxer, I feel like JDM could leave the sport right now and head into boxing and be pretty successful in that venture. But as far as the UFC, if we're gonna talk about fundamentally and just someone looking like a pure boxer in the ring, JDM is the closest we're going to get when it comes to someone using their hands in the way a traditional boxer would. There is the final high take and probably one of the hottest takes we're gonna get on this list. Conor McGregor, has the ability for a comeback. Now, I know what y'all are looking at. Y'all are looking at his recent pullout, and y'all are looking at his last loss versus Poirier, and for some reason, every time someone brings up McGregor, they gotta bring up how Khabib did him. We understand, okay? Khabib got him. We understand he's not as good as he used to be, but that's the point. I feel like some people forget how good Conor McGregor used to be. And I'm not even gonna sit up here and act like I'm a big Conor fan. Honestly, I could care less what happens if we see him fight again or not. I'm just saying I grew up in the era where he was doing his thing. Some of his really early fights where he was just, you know, throwing crazy spinning wheel kicks and spinning back kicks. And as the time went on, we started to see his boxing capabilities come out and how really, you know, precise that left laser of a hand is. How he cooked Jose Aldo in like the first, like what, minute? That's on the same level as that Taporia Volkanovski KO. It's like no one thought that was gonna happen. I know it's really easy for you to say today, oh, I knew Conor was gonna beat Aldo. When the fight was actually going on, me personally, I didn't see the fight even ending in the earlier rounds. I honestly thought Aldo was gonna take it maybe around four or five. See, I've been in the MMA since like, you know, the Josh Koscheck GSP days. So I've been in the game for a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, some of these young bucks nowadays, I don't know what's going on with. Let me stop acting. <laughs> But look, Connor's still working. He doesn't, you know, he might not be as quick as he used to be. He might not be as strong as he used to be. He might not even be as sharp as he used to be. But I mean, look, and I know he's fighting the taxi driver right now. It doesn't really matter. But he's, look, he's still in the gym doing his thing. It's one thing. And I know what y'all are going to say. Oh, he's been coked up. He's been drunk and shit. And I know he has been. Okay, but if he really knows how to lock in, you know, whatever men pull out, whether it be an injury or whatever, he gets that situated. He really locks in on the UFC instead of just playing games. I feel bad for Chandler right now. I'm not going to lie. Imagine sitting out for this long just to not even get the fight you were waiting for. I'd be done. But at the end of the day, Conor McGregor, no matter what you see going on in the present day, in the past... When he was on top of the world, he was seen as one of the best fighters in history. So you cannot take that away from him just because he's starting to get a little washed up right now. I feel like instead of, you know, going straight for like a crazy title fight, I genuinely feel like if he takes it, because he has a multiple fight deal that he's already signed. It's not like he's going to fight Chandler and then that's it. If he genuinely locks in, takes a tune-up fight or two, and then fights somebody that has a big name, I'm not saying he's gonna win, I'm not saying he's gonna dominate, but I feel like he's a chance. But anyway, those are my hot takes. Um, I'm kinda done now. I don't know how to end videos, so I guess I'm gonna just tell y'all I love y'all, I appreciate y'all, and I'll see y'all later. Goodbye.